Wainbrook 85. Last time I saw you, I think I had a Sheets Coffee, and uh, now Royal Farms. On the road again, up to Blair County, Pennsylvania, to Sheriff Jim's Shrimp Boil, and then on up to the cabin after that. Settle back and uh, grab yourself that beverage, whether it's a coffee or something a little bit stronger, that's up to you. Brazilian dark roast, not too bad. Also going to try to get up to the horseshoe curve and uh, check that out. We'll, we'll see what the horseshoe curve is all about in a little bit. curve pull in and I think I gotta do a little walking up the stairs Horseshoe Curve is a three-track railroad curve on the Norfolk Southern Railway's Pittsburgh line in Blair County, Pennsylvania. The curve's about 2,370 feet long, about 700 meters, and 1,300 feet or 400 meters in diameter. It was completed in 1854 by the Pennsylvania Railway as a way to lessen the grade to some of the Allegheny Mountains. It's a major east-west route through Pennsylvania to get over those Alleghenies. Horseshoe Curve's long been a tourist attraction as this trackside observation park was completed in 1879 and was again renovated and a visitor center built in the early 1990s. The rail line has been important since its opening. In 1942, the curve was targeted by Nazi Germany as part of Operation Pastorius. Their mission was to sabotage and attack American targets, economic targets, and the Horseshoe Curve, this crucial railroad pass near Altoona, as well as the repair shops that are close by. I'm here with uh, Sheriff Jim in Blair County, and he has me up for the shrimp boil for my second year. And how many years have you been doing the boil? Five. Five I years? Fifth year, yeah. Okay. I know you did you used to do it at your camp, but now it's a little easier to do it here. And, yeah, uh, that little maniac about two years old makes it a little simpler to keep him in his setting here. Yeah. Chase him each year. I can imagine. <laughs> keep him out of the poison ivy and everything like that. Yeah. 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 I just kind of wanted to thank Jim and take a couple minutes. A uh, few residents in, in Blair County. Uh, Jim is up for election this year. And if you get in that voting booth in November uh, and you see his name in there, and again, it's uh, Sheriff James Ott. Uh, I, I know uh, he'd appreciate your support. I know I'd certainly endorse him. He'd, if I lived here, I'd certainly be voting for him. And met him basically through through YouTube, and we conversed and kind of kicked it off a little bit and have had some late night uh, text conversations oh, yeah. and things like that. So uh, it, it's been great. It's been great. And so what do you plan for your hunting season this year? Just the Hoping usual? to try and go. <laughs> um, the usual. I'm going to try and get out. If it was like last year, geez, I, I got out. Uh, uh, there was a lot going on in the last year. And, yeah, that's uh, for sure. So I finally got one evening out for archery. Mm -hmm. And I was in the stand. I think I was only in, I don't know, 20 minutes. I think it was 45 minutes from the time of tag and starting to gut. Mm -hmm. uh, that I got a uh, younger but a nice, I mean, nice big body. Mm -hmm. um, five point uh, right up behind our camp at one spot where I hunt. Mm -hmm. And uh, I laughed because a couple of the other members who hunted their butts off. And uh, I texted them. I was like, hey, I got a buck down. Already. Mm -hmm. So they, they was like, we put all this time and run around this mountain. And um, so, but it, but it was good. So I don't know, the Lord will bless me uh, again twice in a row if he does I'll, I'll be uh, enjoying it and very mm -hmm. appreciative if he doesn't 
Um, you know what? It's uh, the the idea of just getting out there. Just and, getting uh, up to camp with your buddies and yeah, having fun. And you and I talked about this countless times. Countless times. Um, you know, it's just the enjoyment of getting together and the camaraderie that's there. And, um, even throughout the year, planning for it. We got up and do, we had some work stuff that we put together and did uh, the other week here. Got up and mm -hmm. try to, as you do, um, my travels are much easier than yours. Right. Um, but we get up, did a few odds and ends, still a few more things to do. Uh, unfortunately, now here we are in archery season. We're mm -hmm. a couple odd things, but nothing crazy. Um, try and get up, try and get out for uh, rifle. So mm -hmm. the one, one of uh, Gene, you met him here last year. Mm -hmm. His dad will go up. Uh, he's our senior guy now. So we try to focus on getting him into uh, into some nice locations. Mm -hmm. and, and at this point, the focus is that. You right. know, I'd, I'd love to watch his dad, just as I did with my dad. Mm -hmm. um, whether it was the, the harvest of the turkey or the, the harvest of his last buck was there. Mm -hmm. um, just, just to be present for that the joy of watching that and I know Gene's looking forward to that we talk about the days of when uh, that day is gone and it, and it changes things um, so seeing his dad there has certainly um, rekindled some things for a couple of us that don't have our fathers around oh yeah um, absolutely so, yeah we're looking for that and maybe a bear all right well let's get over the potatoes and carrots and see how they're doing and maybe it might be time to throw what's uh, onions onions, uh, onions and, and corn next or, or, uh, or uh, no corn next and then onions and, onions and, and lemon lemons oh yeah. boy that's the good smell yep yep that'll be that'll bring it up all right so, well, let's yep, go let's do it Now, not scald ourselves. They were mad this morning. They came out. I harvested all their crop. Oh. Yeah. Or always kibasi, and then I did a. Um, this year I did a, a uh, jalapeno cheddar. Oh, nice! Yeah. yeah, I think I see that. In there. A little bit of garlic yeah. ring bologna too. Room for shrimp in there. I know. fantastic as it looked as, as I expected it to be uh, they had some some of that uh, the shrimp was great that we had some sausage in there that was uh, jalapeno cheddar also in there and that uh, that was pretty darn good I really enjoyed that uh, it wasn't too hot for me and uh, the, like I said the shrimp was great and the rest of the potatoes and carrots I uh, really enjoyed everything 
So again, uh, thank you, Sheriff Jim. I appreciate it. Had a real nice time there with uh, your friends and family. Now, uh, I know this is uh, one of your things you really like to do, and you, you pull it off really well. So I appreciate it. And tonight, Penn State has a home football game against Indiana at 7 o'clock. And it's about uh, a little before 4 o'clock now, so I have to go actually up past the stadium and 2.20 and 99. So we'll, uh, we'll see if I end up hitting any football traffic or not. Hopefully at this point, uh, people that want to tailgate should already be there, and hopefully I'll be able to get in there without too, too much problem. But uh, we'll see how much activity is up ahead. Arrived at the cabin. What do we got here? Exactly 624. Uh, good, pretty good ride up. Uh, no traffic from Penn State. Uh, looks like there were some tailgaters starting to filter in there and there was some parking around there, but nothing uh, on the road that was going to slow me down, uh, which is good. Good luck to them tonight. Just started listening to the Phillies game here on the Sirius XM and uh, you know, so I only got a half inning, which nothing happened. So we're here, and uh, now I've uh, got about a couple days. I think this is going to be the nicest weather. I, we possibly could be having some some showers and thunderstorms over the next couple days. So it could be some inside things. I did want to get walking around in the woods here. Uh, uh, hopefully I can find a pocket where I can do that. Pockets. So as you can tell, yes, I went out and did it and got the new Grand Cherokee L and a very nice ride coming up. I think it rides a little bit smoother and a little bit quieter than the other one. Not sure if it's the tire combination. This one doesn't have quite the transmission set up, uh, the low and all the other things that the other one had. It's a little bit more luxurious uh, but uh, should be fine for up here. I'll have to get a new set of chains for it but we should be good. So, uh, really enjoyed the ride up in that. Looks like I got a few bugs splattered on the front of it, but that'll happen. Uh, driving, I don't know what it was, uh, 450 miles or whatever. Uh, I never really checked it. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and get unpacked. Uh, I think I'm just going to settle down and relax and not do too much. Just get this open a little bit. 68 in here, 65 outside. There we go. I have the uh, EcoFlow hooked up and uh, a lot of power for in there tonight. You'll be able to get through tonight very, very easily. Uh, nice not having to hook up that generator. A little bit hungry. Uh, we ate this afternoon. This was about 2.30, 2.30 or so, so I'm getting a little hungry. To go with today's fare, brought up some cream of crab soup. So I'm going to go ahead and have that. Some crackers to go with that, and maybe a Pabst, and then maybe that adult beverage. So let's get this soup heated up. I was thinking about doing a fire out there tonight, but I want to get something to eat and... There's some kids out there on a four-wheeler. It is uh, it is the start of PA archery season. So there's a lot of people up on the weekend, a nice weekend, leaves, things like that. Uh, but there's they're tooling around on a four-wheeler and yelling a little bit. Not that I blame them for it. Have fun, kids. But just didn't feel like being out there and a little bit hungry. So I'm going to go ahead and get this going and uh, then sit down and, and watch some kind of movie tonight or some kind of show or whatever. So uh, let's get this cream of crab bubbling up. I'm going to have to replace that battery, but I think I can see. Oh, Paps, where you've been all my life. It's just about ready. Don't think I want to pour it in a bowl. Don't need to get fancy with this, but i got to fancy it up just a little bit. I don't know what I can do here. So, 
Oh, there we go. Crab crackers. There we go. That's the ticket. Now it's fancy. All right, let's eat this. Time for that beverage. And last time I was up the movie with Burt Reynolds, kind of tricked everybody, I think, with that uh, car going into the bay uh, as maybe being a more action type movie. But I think you know what it is now. Yeah, it was The Longest Yard uh, with Burt Reynolds, uh, the first one. And uh, enjoyed that. Uh, kind of brings back a few memories of seeing that back, you know, one right when I was right in high school or right out of high school. And for those of you that got that, uh, there was only a few of you. More people got Beyond the Law, which I was, I would have known the Burt Reynolds one. I don't think I would have known, or I know I would have known Beyond the Law. But uh, congrats to the, to the people that got uh, Burt Reynolds in the longest yard. And there was a lot of misses, Gator, a uh, couple others that probably I, I might have thought of myself also. But right now, it's bourbon time with Rabbit Hole Distillery from Louisville, Kentucky. Sean and I uh, found Rabbit Hole when we went down to have a deer hunt with uh, Larry Dean and Emmett down in Kentucky. And we just happened to stumble upon this uh, the first night we were there been a favorite of mine ever since uh, my personal opinion one of the best bourbons uh, out there a reasonably priced bourbon this bottle goes for 60 ish um, so it is uh, a real favorite of mine they have a couple different ones high gold this is the cave hill which I think I think it might be a couple points higher in the proof uh, pretty 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 up there but for right now I did my driving, I'm in, I'm in, so I'm going to enjoy myself. Uh, I, I love the shrimp boil today, uh, enjoyed the crab soup. Now it's time for a little bit of this K-Fill. Pop that cork and uh, put it into my uh, cup here. This is one of those steel type cups, so the ice won't melt too, too, too fast in it. Well, I'm going to enjoy this. I got the sausages heating up. Coffee is done. Thanks to Mark, Backcountry Pipe. You've heard me mention him before. He sent down a nice care package to me uh, that just came this week, just in time. Had some spice in there. This coffee from a local roaster up in Nova Scotia. Uh, a Colombian blend. Very, very good. Very smooth. Reminds me kind of a, a Timmy Horton for you Canadians. Um, but, of course three or four levels up from Timmy. I have, I've had had it. Uh, I appreciate it, Mark. Thank you very much. You'll see the spice and uh, maybe a cigar a little bit uh, later today. Oh, that coffee is really, really good, Mark. I appreciate it. So let's get on to these eggs. I'm going to get my eggs cracking and uh, a little cheese melted. So let's get on to this breakfast. Got my croissants there. Sausages underneath, and then that uh, grated, I think that's Monterey Jack Colby cheese. We'll just give that cheese a minute to melt on the top there with that hot egg I just put on, and then we'll be eating in just a minute. Since it's raining out, I'm going to go ahead and, and do a couple things over here. I'm going to take this sign down again. Put a piece of trim up here that matches the gray here and then put another one down here where we have our miscellaneous stuff sitting do have another pin for the uh, shelf of honor i guess over there that we're going to call it uh this one is for my dad if you've been following along you know he was in world war ii uh, 13th armored regiment was able to find a pin that represented his unit. It does say the black cats on there. I hope you can see it there. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and put that up uh, in his honor. And I do have a picture here that uh, I got a senior in Vietnam that I'm going to put up over here too. And I want to find one of my dad. Uh, couldn't find the right one to do. I, I want to try to get one with him. From the newspaper when he was uh, coaching football. You know, uh, I wanted one of those picks, maybe a little bit younger, 
and uh, kind of just to the sort of that that football coach kind of uh, vibe to it. So uh, I'm still looking for that. I think I'm going to be able to pull some things off of newspapers.com actually. But uh, I'll get that picture up a senior. And again, it's it's one from Vietnam, one younger, one that from when I didn't know him. Uh, but uh, it was one that uh, that the chairman passed on to me and uh, I kind of liked. So I got that uh, done. So we'll, we'll do a little trim work. We'll put this, uh, put senior's picture up. We'll put my dad's 13th armored regiment up and uh, pin up. Put that one right here for him. As I mentioned, that's pretty soft wood. So these, these hat pins go into it very easily. And, uh, there's one up there for my dad. And, uh, I think I'm going to try to find something else. Maybe Korea. Korea does seem to be the forgotten war. Not that many people remember or think about it. Now I've got that picture of Senior up. I think it was just a picture, just, just captured in time. Not set up, not, not let's take a picture. Just somebody snapped it as he was doing something. Just kind of shows a real human being, a, a person in a difficult situation. Uh, and again, I, I kind of like this one. So that along with uh, the pin for my dad on the shelf of honor here in the cafe. And we'll get, we'll get on to uh, getting the sign down here and, and getting a little trim up there. That is up. Uh, we'll get the made to order sign back up. And then uh, you can see I didn't put any screws in the center here. It's not coming down, but we'll have the screws from the uh, made to order sign that'll go through and, and then I'll also hold that in. I didn't feel like it's the need to put extra screws in there. Just about finished it off. Uh, I think it looks pretty good. Uh, picture up there and the pins and, and then the extra trim and did, did put that one across the bottom. Uh, I did have to go with two pieces on this. I wanted to make it one continuous piece, but they're 13 bucks and it just, it's a little pricey to be uh, doing just because I didn't want a, you know, a small cut right in there that you probably almost can't even tell after a while. You won't even see it there. Look right here. Uh, you can see there's a little bit of the, the old board sticking through. And then right there, there's some black and actually I got a magic marker and I'm just putting the black underneath of there and I'll, I'll continue along here. Uh, so it, it's kind of like offsets it and you almost can't even see it then. So that kind of worked out very cheap. I think the magic marker was a dollar. Uh, so that uh, that's working out good. And I guess this project kind of kind of wrapped up. Uh, nothing else I can do here. I don't want to put anything on the legs. And uh, right down here, you can see 0507, which kind of dates it uh, from when Senior actually built it to begin with. And then I kind of put my spin on top of it and over here. And I kind of centered some of the signs and the um, potholders, etc. But uh, we're getting there. We'll get a picture of my pop up there. But uh, I think now it's time for lunch, and it's going to be a pretty complicated lunch here, so stay tuned. Here comes that super complicated lunch. Boil water, pour it in, wait, eat. I'll certainly be making it up with dinner tonight, but uh, let's go with something. Let's go with something really simple. We just finished up that complicated lunch of a cup of noodles, a little bit of rock star energy uh, sitting out here on the deck. Probably hear some four wheelers going by. The kids are still out having fun. I just wanted to take a couple seconds to give you an update on the uh, logging. Uh, we're waiting on the gentleman to do his inventory, his site survey, whatever you want to call it. Uh, his responsiveness to emails and telephone calls hasn't been great. But I want him to get this done before hunting season starts kicking in, really before November 1st. I don't want the, the guys walking around the woods in you know near hunting season, marking trees and spreading scent and everything all over the place. So I'm going to email him again. I'm going to call him again. 
and say, hey, let's get this wrapped up by November 1st at the latest. There's more logging. When I go out tomorrow, you'll see some more logging up on the road, a different area. So that now it looks like there's been uh, one, two, three. Now this is the fourth spot up here that's getting logged. And again, uh, within a few years, it should help uh, bring some of that as uh, some of that uh, undergrowth uh, up and a little bit more for the deer to eat. The acorns have not looked good up here. Normally, I'll hear them falling and I haven't heard anything so far. Uh, it's not looking good for acorns here at home. There are just uh, thousands and thousands of acorns right behind the house. They're just, every time you go out there, you hear them falling. Uh, so, but up here, uh, I know sometimes they're, they're heavy down there, then they're light up here and light down there, heavy up here, but I just think the gypsy moths uh, put too much of a stress on the trees this year and they're they were unable to handle uh you know trying to produce an acorn uh, as well as as well as uh just living because they got eaten up so so bad between the rain here i just checked the radar it doesn't look like there's anything real real close just gonna kind of stay on the trail here walk down and see if any of that grass started taking that i put down a few weeks back uh, we have had some rain up here and hoping at least to see a little bit of something see if there's any scraping activity starting because kind of like through the edge of this trail we've we certainly have seen these in the past uh, the best person that can find those is uh, the chairman he's so good at finding scrapes and rubs i'll be walking right past it and not even see it and he'll yell it out from 20 yards away and he's got the gift when it comes to that now this was the section of the trail that i did and you can see some grass starting to come up i almost have to get a little bit lower it'll show up a little bit better you can see some grass coming up and that's definitely from what i put down uh is it anything to jump up and down about absolutely not but uh, I think it has a little bit more time to grow and maybe get established a little bit. So hopefully that'll help. This spot right here is doing fairly well. And I can't even remember if I hit this or not. I think I did a little bit. And I think some is naturally coming up in here also. And this is the other spot that I did. Uh, I can see those sort of the same amount that we saw on that trail. Uh, coming back up, you can definitely spot, you can see some some new growth in here. Like this little patch uh, is definitely just starting to get established. So, yeah, warm days, cool nights, that's what grass likes. So it's coming up, it's not, uh, it's not a lush, and I didn't think it was going to be, but uh, we'll see what it looks like uh, hunting season if there's not a few inches of snow or a foot of snow or... 20 inches of snow on it. Here's a good indication of what we have because this is the stump that I set the spreader down on and, and was mixing the seed up and of course some spilled onto the ground and in, in right in, in the uh, on the top of the stump and you can see it's growing right out of the stump right now. So that's kind of what we have, that size grass, that initial very thin grass. Maybe should have done this a little bit earlier in the year since have had a lot of rain in PA this year, unlike last year. Uh, it probably would have been better, but you know, what could you do? You do what you do when I can get up here. So I think I'm gonna go up the other side, uh, take a look at my stand. Well, as we're coming into the cabin here in the driveway, one of the pines or evergreens whatever you want to call them i think i got corrected on that a couple times it's not a pine tree to me anything looks like this is a pine tree i don't care what it is but uh as you can see it's starting to fall into our drive and the trunk is a little bit messed up but the tree looks fine uh, so i'm gonna put this on the list tomorrow to grab a I don't know, a little bit of a rope and see if I can uh, maybe tie it off onto that tree, pull it back up and save it. 
uh, since senior planted it, I don't want to cut it. I have to go in town tomorrow, do a little banking, a little bill paying, and uh, in one of the local banks. So uh, that, I'll stop in Dunham, see if I can get a rope. Keep going, and we'll go down to my stand before it starts raining. Had to take the jacket off. It was sun popped out for a couple seconds. Now it kind of looks like it's going to rain again, but my stand isn't too far, so let's get down there and see what we can do. It doesn't take too too long to get to my stand over here. Go, I'm gonna go ahead and check it out, see how it is. Make sure it's still be able to be occupied this year. Looks like the uh, camo is holding up in the roof. I'm surprised. Uh, I know there was so much snow last year. I was worried about that roof a little bit, but it looks okay. But we'll see when we get up there. Uh, it's rock solid. Well, let's go up and find out. A few pops along the way getting up. Still seems to be good. I don't see any issues in here. I don't see any creatures that made a nest. Locked in there. You can see the lock on there. I know it's not going anywhere on the straps. They're still in okay shape. They're probably getting to the point where they want to be swapped out, but uh, may have some news on that. Yeah, a couple more steps. Yeah, looks okay. Still still in okay shape. Definitely this, uh, this, this camo wrap. This is some good stuff there. Again, small stand, one person, one man. Uh, got that one hole in the roof pretty good there. That would let some rain in on me. But uh, not... Not too too bad for leaving it out. I think this is going on three years now that that's been out, which is a surprise. I thought it would have been destroyed by now. But it's looking good. Uh, very tight in here. Definitely needs some shooting lanes, but uh, let's get down and talk about that. As I was alluding to over there in the stand about shooting lanes and such, I was contacted by uh, Pete. Uh, he's in Big M Hunting Stands. And uh, Pete and his family are getting into the stand building business, like the box type stand. And they built a few for some friends and family and are now branching out to go ahead and serve the public also. And their stands are 4x4, four 4x8, four, four so you can get two people in there, but you can certainly customize it to whatever you want. And uh, Pete had contacted me and said, hey, he'd like to put a stand in for me. Well, I, I certainly love Pete's offer and thank you very much. But I, I said, like, let's wait until the spring, until they get done that logging. Uh, my stand's up over here. And I see a lot of activity down in the plateau before that. So I wanted to kind of get something over in this way, down on that plateau down there. There are some old logging roads from 30 plus years ago. And uh, the logger said they would clear them out for us. So I was thinking, uh, let's go ahead and wait. And then Pete, if he's got the four-wheeler and stuff, then he can come in and bring the stuff right to the spot where I want to do it, set it up, and, and get it done. But these are prefab, so everything would be on the four-wheeler, and they can assemble them in the field pretty easily. Area that he services, all of Ohio. So you Ohioans, uh, if you uh, are interested in one of these nice-looking stands, from uh, Pete and his family, uh, all of Ohio, central to north central PA also that he'll be glad to do. And if you're interested, uh, you can reach him through his email at uh, pjmulholland at earthlink.net, which is right here. And it's going to be in the description also. Uh, if you want to contact Pete, maybe you're interested in one of those stands, you live in those areas, Ohio, north, north central PA. Uh, go ahead and contact him and talk about uh, what you need and what he can do for you. I know he'd appreciate it. I know I'm going to appreciate being in a nice covered stand in here, a little, uh, little buddy heater in there and 
you know, it'll be it'll be nice. Won't care if it's raining, snowing, whatever. It'll be it'll be great to be in the stand. And Pete, I really appreciate it. Um, but that's why I haven't done anything. I haven't done any shooting lanes over here because uh, we want to wait, see what Pete can do for me, and then we'll kind of go from there. So I guess uh, maybe we'll take a look at the pit and pull that camera nail, and uh, then we'll get back. I got to take my uh, mammoth steak out of the cooler. Let that start coming up the temperature around where I had put the minerals out all summer long. Still getting some dough uh, every once in a while coming through. A few weeks ago, let's take a look at this nice one that came through. Let's get this ready to go. Halifax Spice Company Trade Winds Blend. A little chili olive oil. Rub that all over sides. Make sure you get everything when you're rubbing that olive oil on there. Don't skimp on it either. It really doesn't matter. Slather it on just like I'm doing. And then here it goes. Here's that Trade Wind Spice. Put that all over it. And when you have a piece of meat this big, go heavy. Get all the sides. Both sides. Everything. There we go. That's looking better now. You know what? Let's get this out to the grill. It's time. Can we do the reverse here? And low and slow. We've got a cool on the left, hot on the right. And it'll be out there a while, probably an hour. It's gonna be good. And of course now the, the sun comes out. I, I did want to do this in the smoker, but uh, the sun comes out. But I have a feeling it's gonna, it's one of those days that it, it, you know, it could be raining in 20 minutes again. So uh, best to go ahead and do it on the grill here, the reverse sear. Uh, about 275 over here, 279. I'm going to try to keep it in that, uh, more like in that 260 range. I'm going to try to keep this low so we don't get the outside all browned up and and burned. And then uh, the center is not done to my liking. Now, uh, nice, wonderful, giant tomahawk steak that's going to be tonight and tomorrow night's dinner. You're going to have some good stuff to go along with this tomahawk, that's for sure. I think we just hit 50. Uh, grill's about 264, which is right in that range that I want it. Uh, I don't want to lift the lid up because you know it's going to get cooled off if it does and I'll just slow it down so we'll we'll come back we'll get a status in a little bit. We're right about 80 degrees there so I'm just going to go ahead and flip it over real quick. Let's take a peek. Oh my golly that is coming along fine. Take a look on this side. Of course a little bit more cooked like I thought it was going to be, so that's why I wanted to flip it at 80. So let's get it closed back up again. We'll let it get to about 120-ish uh, or so. And then I'm going to go ahead and cook my sides. And then uh, as they're finishing up, I'll go ahead and sear it up. I'm going to have a potato here. I'm going to cut it into about half-inch slices or so. That wasn't quite a half-inch there. Drizzle a little bit of the uh, chili garlic oil on it. A little garlic salt. That's also going on both of the sides. Here we have some very small, as far as diameter, asparagus, nice and tender. No real reason to cut too much off the bottom. Just, uh, I think I'm just going to do about an inch or so. We'll separate them out. Nice three stacks. Goes a long way. And some garlic salt. And what can make those better? Wrapping them in bacon. Gonna get a little messy here, but whatever. I have soap and water I can wash up. And there we have our sides ready. Bacon wrapped asparagus and some grilled up potatoes we're gonna have. Great sizzle going. 
starting to warm this side up. In a few minutes I'll crank it up. Get that steak seared off. Took the tin foil off, let those tips cook up a little bit now. Since we're getting close. Start turning the heat up over here on this side. So we can do a nice sear. It rose up about uh, six degrees while I was sitting there. We're getting close. Got the sear going on this. Potatoes and asparagus, bacon are getting close. Look at that. There we go. A little honey in to go with this. And some tomato juice. And there it is, all finished up. Little Peter Luger, Luger steak sauce. That's a little bit different with the uh, horseradish in it. A little bit different taste of a. And I, I just wanted to bring some up. Uh, but I know that I know that ribeye is going to be fantastic. Got a little butter. Put some butter on the potatoes. Cut that. Let's plate this up. Look at that. Just how you want it. This is going to make some good leftovers. That's that's like a prime rib right there. Same color, same texture. Well, just enjoying a little pipe after dinner. That was fantastic dinner i gotta remember that uh bacon wrapped asparagus for the guys sometimes and the potatoes great and of course topped it off with that tomahawk unbelievable just sitting here with a after her dinner pipe with some tobacco that mark from backcountry pipe sent down to me sutliff great outdoors uh, apropos for here nice aromatic and a little vanilla note in there uh, this will go along good with my cup of coffee here, about half a cup of coffee after that fantastic dinner. That tomahawk was outstanding. I have to remember the bacon wrapped asparagus for the guys. I think they'd like that. And the uh, potatoes turned out really good like that. Uh, I haven't had them like that before. gave them a try but it was there they were cooked all the way through and it's just a nice flavor on there tasted really good so that was a excellent excellent dinner that peter luger kind of added a little bit to the uh to the steak itself and like i said peter luger is a little bit different with that uh horseradish sort of cocktail sauce uh taste almost to it new can so it's a little bit damp i, I let it stand down for a couple hours but uh still a little damp but that's okay we'll enjoy this pipe enjoy this coffee and uh it's really a little after six like 6 20 something like that and it seems kind of dark so i don't know if we got some rain coming in or not i didn't look at the radar yet but i'm gonna uh, sit out here and then uh head in and uh i'll tell you what i'll just pop a picture in here right now well let me know if you know what this one is i think i'm gonna watch this one tonight Well, if you do, uh, certainly put it in the comments. A little, uh, you know, a little bit older, you know, with me being a little older and just uh, one of those movies I remember from, from when I was a lot younger than I am now. So take your, take your guess, put it below, I'll let you know. And don't worry about somebody seeing it. It's okay, you put your guess in there. A lot of people, some people read the comments, other people just, it's a comment to me. And that's about it. The other people don't look at them. Mm. Yeah, like I said, about a, 
about a half a cup. Don't want to overdo it and be up to one o'clock this morning in the morning. So everybody have a great evening, and then we'll catch you for breakfast. Rainy morning, rained all night, from what I could hear while I was awake, and still coming down now, misting, fog. So another kind of stay around the cabin day here. Uh, getting some breakfast going, a little coffee again with that uh, great Colombian coffee. Um, I think it was just us. It was a little uh, boutique, um, what do they call that, beanery or roaster up in uh, Nova, Scotia. Nova Scotia. So enjoying that again. Like I said, super smooth, which is nice. I think the older I get, the I'm going from the dark very darks to the more to the medium coffees for some reason but um, just gonna have this uh, gonna have the same breakfast as yesterday the croissants and eggs and everything but putting a little different spin on it oh, I sliced all the rest of that uh, tomahawk up this morning and I'm gonna put some of that on my croissant with eggs and cheese this morning yeah there they are looking good a little steak and egg breakfast generator and tank I gotta fill up I use that generator because we haven't had any Sun to, to charge our eco flow back up again and that's uh, kind of what you see here in the plug and right in through the window electric it goes right over here to to our eco flow Delta max if we take a look at it 75% power and uh, I have one bulb on right now. It doesn't even think it's pulling anything. So not too, too bad. Uh, I just used a few this morning to light up while I was cooking and eating. Next up, we have these uh, lights around the deck out front here, which is great when you're, because we have everything out here. We've got the grill out here now and the coolers. What I wanted to do is uh, these lights right here, wanted to put up a string of solar lights so we wouldn't have to rely on our EcoFlow to charge these lights up or power these lights up and just get it to one less thing and has to worry about. Have the string of solar powered lights right in the box here. There they are, and that's the, the solar and the bulbs themselves. And I think I have a uh, some remotes you can set Give, give you some different color options. I think there's eight different colors on them. And uh, we'll, we'll get this hung up and see how we do. Well, there they are. Goes from looking a little bit uh, kind of more party-ish to a little bit more industrial. But uh, that's fine. I, I ended up taking the other string down. I thought it looked a little bit too cluttered with everything up there. And that'll be right in the shed if we need to grab what we can. And I just have our panel over here that uh, hopefully will get enough sun. That's just a, a clamp right there onto the gutter. So I'm just hoping that's, uh, that's enough for right now. Because uh, it does have an on-off switch. On-off and then there's a mode. You can do flashing and series and... And it actually, uh, you can charge it from a uh, USB right there, too, if the sun didn't do enough for you. Uh, so, I wanted to try to get that. As you can see, this is arm's reach with me on the ground. So, I wanted to ha just have everybody be able to reach up there, turn that on and off. I don't think we want it on while we're not here. Just so it looks like, uh, have that going every day. I think I'd rather just keep it off. I should be able to do a little bit of experiment. During the day here, if I uh, if I cover the uh, panel up, making it simulate being dark, and I'm not sure if you can see them or not. The lights are on. Came on as it got dark. So uh, let's grab this remote control and see what else we got here besides white. Oh boy, red, green. Blue. Mm, sort of white again. Lighter green. Lighter blue. Purple. 
and that orange that's what i was looking for that nice orange so the bugs won't come in here's the same fan light combo that i have in my pod it does have a remote if you need it i've never used it because i can just kind of just reach up there it does have the four double a's that are or four d batteries that it runs off of and there it is a little hook and these those fan blades in there they're foam so you can put your finger up there and while it's running it doesn't do anything it doesn't hurt you or anything like that but it's a nice little unit uh here's your on off switches and we'll put the batteries in and everything and i think it's 14.99 and all the a uh, pretty good uh, thing uh with it's light but of course once you get these that really adds five times to the weight with those d batteries so it's not it would be nice if it was just like this but unfortunately not Let's put the batteries in two speeds on the fan and then the the bright a little dimmer and then the night light so here's sean's spot here near the window you got a pretty nice spot here so we'll get that uh, fan up in the ceiling and uh, we'll be set and there it is pretty nice uh, i left in the book and his remote control there and so the extra string in case he wants to redo it reposition and he has to cut it he can just go ahead and do another one so well sean you're set go back in here another minute I just put that shelf up over there uh it's nice just to be able to put something on that's my toiletries bag and my kind of my tobacco accessories bag i got my pipe and tobacco and stuff in there uh just makes it a little bit easier sometimes i'll i'll throw it up here but i'm just getting some junk up there so i saw that the other day and it's like it was one of those deals three bucks i think in, in the thrift stores so why not grab it why not? Well, there's another lot that's doing some logging. They look like uh, red oaks to me. We're logging, getting done. Pulling some out from up here. I see a blind set up. But, uh, I guess now's the time to get logs. I'll go ahead and stop and done them, see if I can find that rope to straighten that tree back up again. And then off to get a, swap out a uh, propane tank. There's our mountain. Uh, you can see a little bit from how they thin things out as far as trees go. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what happens overall. But uh, colors wise, not quite, I would say another 10 days. And uh, it's gonna look pretty good. I know Senior used to like to come up it's around his birthday right now, and we'd come up, and uh, he he really liked the colors. He was there. Look at those reds. Oh, look at the yellows. He he loved the uh, fall season, like like most people do. Well, just a little leftovers this evening. Got some stuffed mushrooms, spinach, avocado, portobello stuffed mushrooms, and the the ribeye, the roast from yesterday, the tomahawk. Heating up here on the other side finish it off with a little Peter Luger's steak sauce. So uh, real good day today. Got some things accomplished that I wanted to get accomplished as you saw. Got stormy a little bit then slacked off. The sun popped out then rain again. But uh, all good. Went into town. Did the chores. Took care of that tree that I wanted to, to do as you can see in this photo here. Uh, it's kind of back up and, and the way it should be. So we'll have, we'll have to see if that holds or we may have to stake it so I'm going to go ahead and settle down, have this, and then uh, it's, I think it's going to be okay. I'm going to get out there on the deck, get the dinner, and uh, cigar it up. So let's get this done. Let's take a look at those mushrooms. Oh, they're doing pretty good. I see some cheese starting to melt. That's a good sign. Well, as quick as it uh, came on, uh, it left. Probably about 20 minutes. Really good downpour. There was a lot of water came down. I just kind of wanted to wrap things up for this video. 
sitting out here with a Charter Oak cigar, again set down from Mark, Backcountry Pike. Mark, it's been a good weekend with all the things that you sent down. I enjoyed everything, and I really appreciate it. Uh, means a lot to me. Trust me, it really does. And then the beer, the uh, Sweetwater 420. I've heard of that number before, but I don't know what it means. I know there used to be a Route 420 in Delaware County, I think. But uh, I don't think it's the same meaning. And uh, this is, a, I think, Georgia beer. This is a strong one at 9 percent so this is just like sort of a, a dogfish 90 minute IPA very very similar I'd really have to get one of these and get a get a 90 and almost do a comparison split split one with somebody and do six ounces of each that would be good I went with the uh, Connecticut shade wrapper for the charter oak mark sent down three different ones and uh, I picked this because uh, pretty strong meal, or it was pretty strong beer, and then I wanted to go a little bit lighter with the cigar with a little uh, Connecticut shade, a little smoother. Great cigar. Thanks again, Mark. Well, wrapping up this trip, uh, this is kind of, now's the time where we're starting to get into high gear again. Delaware muzzleloader starts Friday coming up. Probably, uh, it will have already opened before you see this. And I'll probably go on and off. I'm not going to go every day. I'll be pretty selective on uh, what kind of deer I want to take. I do have a camera down there. I'm not seeing much, a few doe. I think there's a monster coyote down there, which is coyotes are kind of rare for uh, Delaware. But if he's hanging around, it was a big one. As a matter of fact, here we go. Take a look at it. It's... Uh, it's number one on the hit list down there, I think, for everybody. Uh, once that wraps up, Sean and I will be heading down to North Carolina to Dart Ridge Farms for our, our guide hunt, if you want to call it that, or outfitter hunt. Looking forward to getting back there with Andrew and the guys. And uh, look for that video probably the beginning of November sometime. Then, then regular Delaware deer season, rifle Delaware deer season, or modern weapon, whatever you want to call it. Uh, pistol caliber or shotgun can't use a rifle in Delaware uh, as far as high caliber like 30-30 or 30-06 or 308 or whatever can't use that uh, I do have the uh, 350 legend that I'll be using down there for that and then of course that'll end and then we'll be right back up here for deer camp 2021 I know uh, the guys are kind of looking forward to it Heard some good things about some deer coming up here, eating the tops of these trees that have been cut, and they're eating all the buds and uh, all the leaves and everything from the trees that have fell. So uh, hopefully somebody will have some luck. It's going to be a busy time. Like I said, some good videos coming out. Uh, I'll take my camera for Delaware uh, muzzleloader. Eh, you know, it depends what happens down there. We'll see, or I might incorporate it into another video. And then, and then, of course, I'll be filming the, our Dot Ridge Farms uh, trip to North Carolina, Rocky Mount. And then the, kind of the same with uh, Delaware deer season. May do one, may incorporate it into Deer Camp 2021, depending on what goes on. And then Deer Camp and my solo piece of I appreciate you coming along with me, keeping me company. And, uh, I, again, want to thank Sheriff Jim for his... Uh, kindness uh, with their shrimp boil out there at his house all the best to him and then coming up here and having some fun and seeing me do a few things appreciate you coming along with me so this is white rook 85 everybody take care stay safe and have a good one